Hello and welcome, or maybe for some of you, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me here. My name is Courtney. Today my plan was to sort of have um, a shorter practice. So this could be one that you just, you don't have a lot of time or you just sort of want to get a little bit of movement in without sweating too, too much. Maybe you have somewhere to be, or it could be one where I'm aiming for this to be about 25 to 35 minutes. Haven't really gotten that good at timing these out since it's hard to look at clocks and stuff while I'm recording to the back of my phone. Um, so another option it could be to take this class, so again this sort of shorter, slower, just sort of warming up the body type of practice, and then maybe finish it with like another one of my 45 minute all levels, maybe a 45 minute intermediate, so that you can create this 75 minute practice, which I don't know, if, but I find in my body 75 minute classes are something that I really, really enjoy. Um, no props necessarily required today, but I will be using blocks, I know for myself and my body. There will be certain shapes where I just want to bring the floor up to me, rather than me trying to bring myself to the floor. I also have a blanket that I'm sitting on. You can use a blanket to do the same, to either sit on, or maybe have spread out for knees. We will be moving through some low lunges. As well as for your Shavasana, the beauty of being at home is that you can really make a really spoiled, luxurious, final rest. So having something to cover the body, maybe having something to be on behind the head, so maybe having a few blankets just sort of at the ready or any sort of cozy cushions or pillows, uh, anything like that. Okay, let's get started. So today we're actually going to start in child's pose. This is a pose that I actually don't very often start classes in. So if you know that you're someone that you're like, you hear child's pose and you're like, oh, this, I don't like that pose. We won't be here for too, too long. And I think one of the biggest limitations I know for most bodies is this idea of sitting down on our heels and there's this big stretch along the front of the foot or top of the foot. So we could grab a blanket or we could roll the back of your mat or whatever you're on up or maybe even a small towel and just sort of wedge it underneath right where your ankle bends and flexes so that you can just create a little bit more space there so that the angle of the foot is less severe there's less of a stretching pushing action and also your hips don't have to be touching your heels okay so i'm gonna sort of have my knees not too too far apart so i'm almost having my shins like skis rather than sort of out in a v-shape so they're pretty close together and i'm going to reach my arms forward and i'm going to drop my forehead down towards the floor just taking a moment to settle in there i'm going to lift my head just so i'm not talking into the mat and muffling my voice so coming into this shape here, just starting to loosen through the body, allow the body to just drape over your thighs, rounding through the spine. You can start to bring some attention to your breath, especially in the back of your body. And this doesn't have to be a still shape. I'm just sort of gently swaying side to side with my hips here. You could let your forehead rock back and forth on your mat. Just taking a quiet moment for yourself. Maybe for some of you this feels like a really safe shape, sort of enclosed, it's dark. It's very, in my body it feels like a, a very protected shape. I'm protecting the front of my body. Then you can stay right here if you'd like, or you can just start to walk or slide your hands just a bit over to the right. And you can lift up a little bit, so rather than being really low, you can get a little bit higher, maybe coming up onto tented fingertips. And then let's reach the left arm up, opening through the side of the body. And you may choose to bring the hand behind the head, bringing a little bit of a shoulder stretch into this. And then crawling your way over to the left and just doing that same thing, reaching the opposite arm up, the right arm, and choosing to bring the hand behind the head. We'll do that a few more times at your leisure, so you can just be nice and still and center, or you can just sort of walk side to side, opening up through 
opposite sides of the body. So if you're walking to the right, stretching open with the left. And if you're walking over to the left, stretching open with the right. And letting this be really loosey-goosey, not too controlled, just sort of moving in a way that feels really primal and instinctive. Let's walk the hands back to center, bringing the forehead as close to the mat as feels comfortable in your body. Reaching your hands forward, start to notice your tailbone. Bring some weight down to the tailbone. Not necessarily sitting your hips any lower, but just bring attention to the very bottom of your spine. Imagine someone's pulling you, keep your head heavy, Slide your hands on your mat and start to roll up nice and slow to sit on your heels. Your head will be the last thing that comes upright. And then we'll reverse that, bringing the chin in towards your chest, roll your head down. Head is nice and heavy and start to seep forward, coming back into child's pose. Doing a few of these at your own time, you can move as fast as slow as possible. So starting with that engagement down at the bottom of the spine, pulling yourself up, head is heavy, hands are sliding heavy on the floor. And once you get to the top, you've rolled all the way up, just start to reverse that right away. Chin tucks in towards chest and slide everything down nice and heavy. We'll do that maybe two more times at your own pace. Really bringing breath into this movement, noticing the quality of your breath and just how it's moving through your body today. If you can, just starting to breathe solely through the nose, inhaling and exhaling there. The next time you find yourself seated, Let's just make our way off to one side of the body and bring the legs out in front of you. You can find your uh, blanket or block-like objects. I should say for the blocks, you can pause if you don't have anything and you'd like this. If you don't have blocks, you can use upside down Tupperware, pots and pans, books or stacks of books, boxes, anything really that just raises the floor a little bit higher up to you. Anyways. So we'll bring our hands off to the side. Feet can be crossed or just anywhere where you're most comfortable. We're just gonna be doing some upper body, some thoracic spine twists. You can also give yourself a bit of added height by sitting on a pillow or a folded up blanket. Okay. So we'll take a breath in. Set your sit bones down into the floor. Push down and grow an inch. And then we'll reach our right hand over to the left shoulder. And we'll just start to rock side to side a little bit. So I'm just trying to twist through the upper body and then come back to center. Just sort of pivoting back and forth a few times here, keeping that great sense of length out through the sitting bones and up through the top of the head. So nice long spine. And you can keep doing this here or you can see what it feels like to slide your hand down to your elbow. So you might notice that you'll get a little bit deeper of a twist as you continue to sort of sway and pivot the body back and forth. And still letting breath just flow naturally in and out through the body as we do this. You may notice that it feels good to exhale as you twist and inhale as you come back to sit up nice and tall. Few more times like this, if you'd like, you can experiment sliding the hand even further down closer to the wrist. You may find that you can twist a little bit deeper and bend more into it, but when you come back to center, you may feel a little bit more limited. And you can choose to stay with one location of your hand, or you can even slide up and down continuously, just sort of seeing how it feels on the back and the different areas of the body as you twist. Now we'll come to do this on the opposite side. Right hand will come down, left hand comes to right shoulder. And just starting to sway and twist, 
still sitting up nice and tall, using the breath if you'd like to sort of assist you in these twists. An option to stay where you are with the hand on the shoulder or you can slide it down maybe to the elbow. And you can always change your mind and go back. Just sort of getting curious, just exploring. It's really small, subtle movement. But I don't know about you, but I found that I've been sitting a lot more that I'm working from home. And I'm getting really tight in my sort of sternum and front of chest area, tight in the ribs. It's just little movements like this. Just to get some movement that's not just rounding over. Feels really nice in my body. Option to reach down for wrist or somewhere lower on the arm. And if you're going all the way down, you can sort of lean into the twist a little bit if you'd like. And I'm not pulling into my deepest, deepest twist right now. I'm going at like, like a C effort, like a, a plus. I'm going for like a C minus effort right now, if that makes sense. <laughs> so I'm not trying very hard to twist. I'm just more finding this rocking motion in my body. Okay. Let's come up to center. Hands can come to cup the knees wherever you're sitting. And then just sort of pull your chest forward as your hands sort of pull back on your kneecaps. You can look up, let your chin lift slightly. And then sort of push into your knees and round back, hollowing out through the tummy. Just moving back and forth. This is sort of like seated cat and cow. So the pelvis is sort of grounded more into the floor than it would be on hands and knees. And it's just really the ribs and the spine moving through these shapes. The pelvis tips a little bit too, but not quite as much as if we were on all fours. And then maybe we start to bring some circular action so the ribs go all the way off to one side and then hollow back, pushing them over to the other side and forward. And again, you can move as slow as you'd like through this. Or if you're feeling comfortable, you can actually speed it up a little bit, but really trying to push to the outer edges of your mobility. So I'm really pushing my ribs out to the side and forward, just trying to bring as much movement to this area of my body as possible. And let's switch directions. Sometimes the switching of directions feels a little bit strange because we all have that one way that just feels a little bit more natural to go to. I find sometimes when I try switching directions, I find myself not switching, like I'll switch for a second, but then I'll actually end up switching back accidentally and I won't even notice until I catch myself. So just being really mindful of these rib circles. Let's come back to a seated position and make our way onto all fours coming into tabletop. So knees can be directly underneath the hips and the wrists can be underneath the shoulders or they can just be sort of walked a little bit further forward. And we'll continue with our cat and cow movement. So dropping the belly down towards the floor. Gaze can lift, shoulders spread nice and wide. And then press down through your hands, round through your spine spreading your shoulders across your back and just moving back and forth, dropping the belly down and then pulling the belly up towards the ceiling. And it may feel good as you come into this cow pose with the belly dropped, take a deep breath in. And as you push to round into cat pose, you can take a nice breath out. Or you may be moving at a pace where you take one full inhale and exhale, one full breath cycle in each shape. And let's come to a relatively neutral place where we're not too much into cat and too much into cow, but in the sort of happy medium. And let's root down through the right hand and reach the left arm up, opening up through the chest. Then keeping your right arm straight, let's scoop the left arm underneath and reach, reach, reach underneath your arm. Inhale the arm up and exhale, reaching down. 
You can keep on doing this, but there's a few other arm variations you can take. You can have a hand come to heart and have that sort of pull you open and push as you lower. Or another one could be hand comes behind the head, opening the elbow up as much as possible, and then tapping the out left elbow to the inner right elbow. So continuing with these upper body twists, just in a different position. Let's bring that hand down and reach the right arm up, open up. And you can stay here as long as you'd like, just getting used to this twist. Keep breathing, there might be a slight constriction. And then finding your arm variation, so either keeping the arm straight as you swoop under and reach up, or the hand can come behind the head, tapping elbow to inner elbow. Or that other option could be to bring hand towards your heart and help it open up towards the ceiling. Let's bring that hand down to the floor, pressing down through your hands, curl your toes underneath and start to send your hips up and back, downward facing dog. Taking a moment to pedal out through your heels here, shift the hips side to side, let the head hang nice and droopy, nice and heavy down towards the floor. You can start to lift your heels all the way up, 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 and away. And then with a soft bend in the knees, start to push your heels down towards the floor. No need for them to actually get there. Let's do that a few more times. Heels come all the way up. And down. Two more. All the way up. And down. On this next one, let's lift the heels all the way up and then pivot and drop both heels over to the right. Again, the heels might not actually drop. From here, bend your knees and sort of allow the body to twist over to one side. And you can stay there as long as you'd like or pivot right away. Heels come over to the left, bending the knees. And you can even really push into your hands and sit back towards your heels. So just moving side to side if this feels good in your body, just twisting and playing around with where your weight is, either more into your hands or more into your feet. I'm just sort of shifting my hips forward and back. And let's walk our way all the way forward to our hands. Head stays nice and heavy and knees stay nice and soft. Take a moment and just sort of hang over your legs. Maybe swaying side to side, option to reach for opposite elbow. Head is the last thing to rise as you start to roll up nice and slow. Coming up to Tadasana, mountain pose. And this will be pretty much the only standing posture we do. We'll only be here maybe three more times, maybe even just one more time. So let's take our hands out by our sides. We're going to be moving through some low lunges next, so if you know you like to have that blanket underneath the knees, please feel free to set that up. I'm going to do that right now, actually. Okay, let's take a deep breath in through the nose and out through the nose. On your next inhale, let's reach the arms up overhead. Exhale, fold forward, cascading over the legs. Inhale, lifts you up halfway, hands come to shins or thighs. Exhale, hands come down, stepping your right leg back, knee will tap down to the floor. And this is where if you have your blocks or jars or books or anything, you can bring your hands up onto blocks it any sort of height or level that feels comfortable in your body. And let's start to press through the right hand and reach the left arm up. Just taking a breath in here. This is where you have the option to bend the elbow once again and sort of open up even more. 
reaching the hand back down to the block or prop or floor, let's start to reach both hands up. Similar to what we just did, let's reach the left arm back, right arm reaches forward, and you can start to look back at your left hand. Inhaling back up, I'm going to flip my blocks up onto their highest height, and I'm going to scooch my left toes a little bit forward. I'm going to start to straighten my left leg any amount and flex my toes up towards the ceiling, coming into sort of a half split. I'm guiding my left leg, my left thigh, my left hip back, back, back in space and sort of shifting my right hip forward ever so slightly. So just sort of scissoring action. Well, front legs pushing back, back hips pushing forward. Then I'm going to bend into the front knee. Now I'm not going to be too concerned if my left knee overshoots my ankle. And I'm really going to lean forward, sort of stretching through my right hip flexor, my front of my right hip right now. And I'm just going to move back and forth here. And I'm going to pause wherever I like, and I'm going to move wherever I like. And I can encourage you to do the same. So rather than going like, oh, I, I took a breath in, time to switch positions. You can just sit and breathe in, a, in the shape for a few breaths. And then sort of transition back and forth. Just sort of seeing how the hamstrings are feeling today, how your hips are feeling, and sort of even how your lower back is feeling. You can allow your chest and torso to get as close to your left thigh as you'd like, or you can be quite lifted here. So you have a few options, you have some room for play, and if you're like, darn, I wish I grabbed some blocks or some props or anything to just sort of bring the floor up, please, once again, feel free to pause the video so you can make this as enjoyable of an experience as possible for you. Next time the left knee is bent, Let's pause there. You can use your blocks or be down on the floor. I'm just gonna keep saying blocks because I'm using them. And start to curl your right toes, lift the back knee, find a little bit of bend. And then I'm gonna step forward either once or taking a few steps, coming right away into that halfway lift. As I exhale, I'm gonna move my props out of my face and then I'm gonna reach my arms all the way up overhead. Right away, let's waterfall over the legs, folding forward, lifting up halfway as you lengthen. Exhale, hands come down. This time the left leg will step back, knee taps down to the floor. Finding the floor or finding something to bring a little bit more height, I'm going to press down through my left hand and reach my right arm nice and high. Option to keep it reaching up towards the sky or bending the elbow and bringing the hand to the back of my head. And I'm continually trying to open up through my chest as I do this. Arm reaches back down towards the blocks for just a moment. And then I'm going to push down and reach both arms up. I'm going to reach even higher and my right arm will reach back. Looking back at my hand, my left arm comes forward. Just noticing how this twist feels a little bit different than that last opening we just did. Then hands come up, then come down, come into a comfortable height in your body. Let's start to wiggle the right toes forward a little bit so that we can start to straighten the front knee any amount. It doesn't have to fully straighten. And just pause here for a moment and flexing my toes up towards the ceiling and I'm drawing my right hip back and my left hip slightly forward. Option to hold here and just keep breathing or just sort of moving back and forth. And as I come into this low lunge, I'm really leaning into it. It just feels, it feels good in my body, it might not feel good in yours but it just really helps me get a little bit of stretch through my left hip flexor. I think because I've been sitting more and I'm not biking as much as I usually would or even walking as much, much as I usually would, my hip flexors are feeling kind of grouchy. Really taking your time here, moving really mindfully.
Next time the knee is bent, pausing. And you can use your blocks or not. Hands come down, lifting the back knee and taking a few steps or one big step forward into your halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale the arms up high overhead and exhale, bowing right back forward. Inhale, lifting the heart up and forward. Exhale, hands come down. Let's step both feet back and hips rise into downward facing dog. Taking a big inhale as you lift the right leg up, allowing the hip to yawn open. Leg can stay straight or bend. Maybe circling the ankle a few times if you'd like. Let's inhale the right leg back up, trying to square the hips towards the floor. And then let's swing that foot forward and then step towards the pinky toe side edge of your foot. So you're coming in wide. Both hands are on the inside of your right foot. Now I'm gonna grab my blocks and bring them up to their lowest height, both hands uh, firmly pressing down and my back knee is lifted right now. I can choose to keep it lifted as I come into lizard pose or I can soften the back knee down to the mat. So you sort of choose how you're feeling today. You can spice it up as much as you'd like or sort of make it cool and creamy vanilla as much as you'd like as well. So I'm actually just going to stay with my hands where they are. I'm getting a good enough stretch here. Option to lower down onto your elbows if you'd like or sort of lower your hands down um, in any means that's available to you. And rather than letting my right knee sort of flare out nice and wide, I'm hugging my right knee and thigh right into my upper arm. So I'm really engaging and squeezing in. We're gonna just stay here for a few breaths, then we'll make our way down onto our backs and just sort of laze around a little bit before prepping for Shavasana. Or again, you could Skip Shavasana and just start another video because this could just be sort of a warm up for you. If your back knee is lowered, let's flip the toes and lift the knee up. I'm going to move my blocks out of the way for now and heel toe my foot in so that it's I have a uh, hand on either side of the foot and I'm going to slip that foot back as I lift my hips to downward dog. Let's do that all on the opposite side. Inhaling the right leg up, allowing the hip to open up, option to bend the knee, giving the ankle a circle or two if you'd like. Then as you straighten the leg, try to point your toes directly down towards the floor. The leg might lower a bit. And then let's take a big inhale. And as you exhale, whoosh the knee in towards the outside pinky edge side of your uh, right hand and right arm. And then I'm going to grab my blocks and come to rest my hands on them. Just rather than me reaching all the way down, I'm just having something to bring the floor a little bit closer to me. Again, option to stay with this back knee lifted, spicy, spicy, or you can lower the back knee down just to take a little bit of the edge off. And again, squeezing the left leg this time into the upper arm. So rather than letting it flare out, sort of lifting up onto my baby toe side of my foot, I'm pushing everything in. So rather than just being a sort of super stretchy pose, I'm making it quite active. So I'm trying to add a little bit of strength and stretch at the same time. And again, you can be down on your elbows if that feels comfortable in your body. Just please again, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze in with the leg rather than letting it roll out. Taking some nice, calm, even breaths through the nose. And I'm just going to move my blocks out of the way for the moment. Walk my foot in, having a hand on either side of the foot, 
lifting my back knee if it wasn't already, and stepping back to downward facing dog. From here, let's start to make our way onto our backs in any way that works for you. So you can jump through or just sort of lower the knees and shift the legs out in front of you, rolling down onto your back. You can have your blanket handy if you'd like to cover yourself with it or have a blanket behind your head. It's coming all the way down onto your backs. Let's walk the legs out wide and reach the hands out wide too. So I'm almost like getting ready to uh, make a snow angel. So I'm really, really wide. I'm in a big X shape right now. And this exercise actually comes from modern dance. I think my teacher used to call it X's and O's. So we're in X right now, and we're gonna start to make little O's. So I'm gonna reach my right arm up even higher and start to swoop it up overhead as I start to slide my right leg in towards my left leg. So I'm sort of in a banana shape. And then I'm gonna flip onto my left hip and curl into fetal position. And I'm gonna reverse engineer that and sweep everything back up into this big X shape. So not really worrying about the mechanics of it too much, really just dragging yourself on the floor and curling into a ball and then opening up into a big wide X shape. So getting this, letting this be really slidey. This is something I even do right when I wake up. <laughs> and I try to stretch as much as I can and then curl as much as I can. Letting the breath flow, flow nice and evenly. I hope you have enough space to do this right now. It does take up a little bit of room. And you can almost imagine that the movement starts from your core. So rather than it just be limbs moving around, there's a big sense of uh, the center of your body being the, the thing that orchestrates all the music, uh, movement, not music. Let's come back into this big wide X shape. Feeling the residue of this practice, the residue of this movement. Let's bend the knees in towards the chest. Give yourself a hug. You can either wrap hands around shins or reach for the backs of your legs. Or maybe cupping the hands with your knees or knees with your hands and just sort of circling either both knees moving the same direction or opposite directions. I have a feeling I went over 30 minutes, but we'll see. Let's reach the hands out towards the side. And just allow both knees to fall over to the left. You can look over your right shoulder. And similar to what we were just doing, let's start to reach the right arm up and overhead, just letting it drag along the floor as much as you're able to. And then come to bring both hands so they stack on top of each other. And from here, let's slide the right hand down the left arm, peeling it open, coming back into that twist. Let's do that one more time, reaching the arm up and overhead, stretching through the shoulder a little bit, perhaps. Then hands come to meet, sliding the right hand across the arm and across the chest, reaching back over. And feeling nice and sort of lazy, let's just windmill the legs, spreading them nice and wide over to the opposite side. So they're now over to the right. You can be looking over your left shoulder. Now let's reach the left arm up and overhead. Just dragging it along, coming to bring the hands on top of each other and then just sliding the left hand across the right arm and across your chest then opening back up to your twist. Let's do that one more time. Sliding the left arm up and overhead, meeting the right hand, and then just gracing and grazing 
all the way across the right arm and across the chest. And letting the left knee lead the way as you come back to center, opening up the knees. Let's start to imagine you're stepping on the ceiling and reach for your ankles or calves or maybe the outside of your toes, or the baby toe side edge of your foot, maybe even you hook big toe with peace fingers. Coming into happy baby. Allowing your pelvis, your spine, and your hips to feel nice and heavy down towards the floor rather than sort of trying to lift up. So everything is nice and heavy and low and grounded here. Option to sort of sway a little bit side to side. And from here, let's make our way to Shavasana. So just lowering the legs to the floor, you can keep your knees bent if you'd like, or you can straighten them out. And this is again where I ask that you sort of spoil yourself a little bit. So you could grab a pillow to maybe put underneath your head or maybe beneath your knees. Sort of, you can have their pillow at the highest height and sort of just squish it down. I find that feels good in my body. Um, but yeah, knees can be bent or straight. This could be an opportunity to come up to a seated meditation, or this might be where you check out and are ready for a more active practice, and maybe you decide to do one of my other videos. Maybe not. So if you're going in towards your Shavasana right now, just letting the body feel nice and heavy and grounded down towards the floor beneath you, just allowing your thoughts to wander and your body just to have some time to rest. And please, I encourage you to stay here for as long as you'd like, like even like up to 25 minutes or more. And you can choose to pause the video or just let it end and stay where you are. Whenever you're ready to unpause, start to guide you out of Shavasana now. Starting to wiggle the fingers and the toes. Allowing this movement to get a little bit contagious as it rolls into your wrists and ankles. Perhaps even the head and neck decide to join in, nodding the head side to side. If you'd like, you can reach both arms up overhead, taking a big stretch out through your fingertips, all the way through the body and out through the toes, allowing a big breath to just naturally fill the body and maybe choosing to let it tumble out your mouth when you're ready. Making your way off to one side of the body. Taking your time here, finding as little sense of rush or urgency as possible. Then we'll make our way to a seated position. Hands can be in your lap or maybe somewhere by your heart. Eyes can be open softly or closed, chin slightly dipped down towards the floor. Taking a moment of gratitude to have woken up today, to have an able and moving body to be able to sync that movement with breath. And also for this ability to sort of self-heal, self-soothe, and self-calm through movement and breath. Thank you for joining me here today. Namaste. And if you enjoyed this video, please feel free to like, subscribe, comment, um, and I would also really appreciate if you could share.
this video with a friend, a family member, or maybe to your social media page. Um, yeah, thank you for joining me. Hope you join again sometime soon.